Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. Today, I'm going to list out every event handler and event object property that is available to you inside of jQuery. First off, here's the jQuery event handlers. You have the blur event handler, which is triggered when you leave an element. Change is triggered when an element is changed. Click is triggered when you click an element with the mouse. Double click is triggered when you double click an element with the mouse. Error is triggered when any error occurs. And the focus event handler is triggered when you enter an element. Key down is triggered when a key is pressed down. Key press is triggered when a key is pressed and released. And I'm talking about the keyboard here. Key up is triggered when a key is released. Load is triggered when your web page is fully loaded. Mouse down is triggered when the mouse button is pressed down. Mouse up is triggered when the mouse button is released. Mouse move is triggered when the cursor moves. Mouse over is triggered when the mouse goes over an element. Mouse out is triggered when the mouse moves off of an element. Submit is triggered whenever the submit button is pressed. And here are all the event object properties. These are properties that are set every single time an event occurs on a web page. You have the event.alt key. This has a value of true if the alt key was pressed. Event.control key has a value true if the control key was pressed. Event.data contains any value passed whenever you fire the bind function, which is used to assign event handlers to elements in a web page. Event key code contains a key code for the last pressed key. Event page X returns the mouse coordinates on the X axis. Page Y returns the mouse coordinates on the Y axis. Event.shift key has value true if the shift key is pressed. Screen X returns the mouse coordinates on the X axis relative to the page. Screen Y returns the mouse coordinates on the Y axis relative to the page. Event.target holds the value of the element's name that issued an event. Timestamp contains the timestamp, which lists when the event occurs, being both the year, month, date, time, millisecond, all of that. Event.type will tell you the type of event that occurred, and that is every single event handler listed out. In the next tutorial, I am going to show you exactly how to use all these event handlers in real life code. And next, you're going to see the web page you're going to create in part six of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to track pretty much anything in regards to event handlers. As you can see here, I'm tracking my X and Y mouse coordinates. If I press a key of any type, you can see that this is going to track those keys that I'm typing in. And if I move outside of this text box, you can see all these have changed. Here's other ways that we're tracking event handlers. If I put my cursor over top of this icon, you can see that I'm tracking that event. I can track clicks. I can track double clicks. And I can even unbind an event handler, as you can see here. Now we are not tracking any longer that I have my mouse or cursor on the icon. And also I'm going to show you how to put an event handler on a submit button. Till next time.